For more perspective on this, let's bring in Anthony Ganji, prison expert and host of radio show Tear Talk. Anthony, thank you so much for your time here. So we just heard from Brian Enton there. Why does this seem to be happening now? I mean, we've talked so much about these escapes, and there have been so many of them within just the past year, some of them within just the past month, even just the past few weeks. Right. So there could be multiple reasons. I mean, obviously, not to provide an excuse, uh, but to be transparent. Yes, corrections is understaffed nationally. Uh, but again, you have to kind of over you have to kind of take a look at the incident and see if that plays in, because there also could be proper staffing or at least in that area. But you could just have negligence or a workplace complacent culture. So with that said, I mean, it really is dependent on the situation and I really don't like to throw out understaffing as a catch-all unless I'm able to be able to determine that that did play a factor uh, in, in someone's escape. You know, and Anthony, I love that that you say that because I was going to ask you next. I mean, we've heard of staffing shortages before. This certainly isn't necessarily anything new. Now, it may be at levels we haven't seen in the past, but why does it seem to be such a significant issue that is touched on right now? Well, obviously, there's more things out there in the news that uh, they showcase the outcome of what happens when you have facilities that aren't properly staffed. I mean, yes, inmates can plan or they can be impulsive, but usually what they do is they act on a vulnerability uh, that either surfaces in that moment or a vulnerability that's kind of within the routine of the work that we do that they notice. Mind you, inmates are going to notice uh, simple things that, you know, most people wouldn't because they live there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So the biggest concern here right now is that we do have a vulnerability that's exposed and the inmates are able to uh, note that vulnerability and then go ahead and, and move forward on it. And, and Anthony, do you think that's something that, that really isn't focused on enough? The fact that, you know, these inmates truly have nothing else to do. I mean, they are locked up 24 seven. They are able to focus on these, you know, what could be minuscule, you know, breaks in, in, in the system that end up resulting in a prisoner being able to break out. Yes, that, that is a great question, because I, I think people don't realize that the more restrictive the environment, the more innovative people can become. So granted, the first time around, OK, so shame on the person. Second time around, shame on us. Uh, you know, we have to always be aware of how innovative people can be, especially in that desperate hour uh, when they're looking to jump ship. So in this case here, all because someone uh, may seem to be in a highly restrictive environment doesn't stop their mindset from freeing themselves or finding ways to do so. So I just want the public to be aware that the more restrictions we put on people, the more innovative they become. And it turns out to be the cat is always chasing the mouse. Absolutely. Do you think, you know, and again, not to place blame, because we do have to remember that, you know, these inmates have all day, you know, every single minute to think about this. But in cases where it does turn out to be a breakdown in the prison system, specifically with staffers, should there be harsher punishments for prison staffers who either weren't doing their job or, you know, in the worst case scenario, helped a prisoner to escape? Yes, I agree. So first thing I look for when I when I oversee an incident or something that occurred is I look for trust. Can I trust the person to be competent and can I trust their integrity? Competency I can cultivate as long as they weren't negligent or corrupt. Uh, but again, when it comes to integrity, those are things that can't be taught. So for me, it really depends on the search circumstance and who's at fault. But yes, if it turns out to be negligent or some level of corruption, 100% uh, because it destroys the public trust, not just in the facility or the agency, but also the brave men and women who are doing the job every day. Exactly. And we know that they are they are working hard to make sure that, that we stay safe, the bad guys stay locked up. A prison expert, Anthony Ganji, great to speak with you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.